Hey everyone, so today's Halloween tutorial is this cat inspired makeup look. These are oversized, so it does give it a bit more of a hybrid look, but they are classed as cat ears and they are beautiful and they are from Rock and Rose. So I'm starting off by using some foundation by The Ordinary. I forgot to show you which one it was. The one I'm using is the Coverage Foundation and it also comes in the Serum Foundation. And I'm using my Beauty Blender to press that over the skin. Next I'm taking the Pigment Foundation Sticks by Iconic London. I'm using a lighter shade to highlight underneath the eyes, the chin and the forehead. And then I'm going to take quite a warm shade to contour. And I'm using Max Fix Plus to dampen my Beauty Blender. These pigment sticks can be used to create a completely flawless foundation base or you can do what I'm doing and use them to highlight and contour. I'm going to be using these stunning brushes, these are by Iconic and they're the ultimate brush set. And I'm going to use an angled brush from the set to start working in this warm contour shade. I've specifically chosen this warm shade to contour with because we're going to be creating a cat-like inspired makeup. We want that really warm appearance to the skin, especially around the outer edges. So I've gone quite heavy with it and I'm really going to work it in. These pigment foundation sticks by Iconic London are super soft. They really blend like a dream and they come in 18 different shades. So you can see I've worked the majority of that in with the brush, it's still quite intense. So we're gonna use our beauty blender to press that into the skin and that will just make it a little bit more seamless. Once I blended both sides of my face and then finished that with a beauty blender, I went in with the Iconic London pigment foundation stick in a lighter shade directly underneath that contour. And this helps the contour to look more defined through the hollows of the cheeks. I'm going to repeat the blending process around the forehead. Obviously, ordinarily I wouldn't apply this much foundation or contour. It's specifically for the look we're creating. It can be scary at this stage, but I promise you it will all come together. For brows, I'm going to be using my Zoeva Graphic Brows in Arsenic. I'll whiz through the process of this because I do have tutorials which I will link on screen for you on how I do my brows and ways in which you can groom them. I'm creating a natural brow for this look, just intensifying my natural shape, but you can go all out, you can do them black, or you could just make them a lot more intense, it's completely up to you. This week I received the new Charlotte Tilbury Instant Eyes Palette, it's so beautiful, so I'm going to use it for this tutorial. I'm taking the first colour from Desk Eye and the first colour from Disco Eye. The Desk Eye shade is going on the outer half of the mobile eyelid, and the Disco Eye shade is going on the inner half of the mobile eyelid. And I'm using my angled brush from the Iconic Ultimate Brush Set to apply this. I should also let you know that these brushes are limited editions. So if you're interested in buying them, I will link them in the description bar for you. This Charlotte Tilbury Instant Eye Palette is perfect for all occasions. So it's one palette with four different styles that so can take you from day to night and it's a limited edition palette. I'm now going in with the darkest matte brown shade. This is from the Day Eye section. I'm using my flat angled liner brush from my Iconic London brush set. I'm drawing a line from the outer corner of my eyelid up towards the tail of my eyebrow. You then want to draw a line off of this with a little dip so it's creating a bit of a V shape. This is going to be the outer wing and you want that to tail off into the socket of your eye. I'm now continuing that line into the socket of my eye but ever so slightly just above the natural crease line. The reason you want the line to be ever so slightly above your natural crease is so that when you open your eye, that line is still visible, it doesn't sink into the socket. I'm now taking the pointed liner from the brush collection and I'm running that along the line we've created to soften it. The reason I'm using the pointed liner is because it's really precise and we don't want to pull the colour up too high. We want it to still stay quite defined but we want it to be softer. Then I'm just going to make sure that's nice and seamless with a fluffy angled blending brush. Make sure you're staying above the line and you're not going onto the mobile lid. Going back to our angled liner brush, I'm reapplying that brown shade to redefine the shape through the socket. Going back to my pointed liner brush, I'm going to repeat the same process as we did before and pull the colour upwards to fade it out. What I like about the tip of this brush is it keeps its shape but it's still soft. So we can use this for not only lining lids but also blending the eyeshadow. A great tool for cut creases. Then go back in with the fluffy blending brush and again re-soften the blend. Next I'm going in with another matte brown, this one is the darkest shade in Desk Eye. And I'm using the angled liner brush to pull that colour upwards, fading off of the socket line that we've already created. You can see this is creating a nice gradient from the darker brown fading up into a nice warmer brown. And then repeat the blending process with your fluffy blending brush. I'm now taking this smoky grey black shade from the Disco Eyes section. I'm going to intensify the socket line, so we're going to trace the shape we've already mapped out. And this is really going to define the socket, giving us that beautiful cat eye shape. Using a light hand, I'm gently pulling the colour up into the brown. 
Next up I'm taking the Ico Skinny Liquid Liner in black. Start off by lining the top lash line quite thin. As we get to the middle of the eyelid we want to start thickening that line and that graduation of thickness is going to become more and more as we get towards the outer edge. To create the wing we're going to trace the shape we drew with the eyeshadow and then we're going to pull our brush back on ourselves towards our lid creating more of a wing. And you're just going to keep repeating this process until you're happy with the nice crisp edge and the thickness of the line. You want it to be fluid all the way down to the lash line. Once you've got the basic shape, you can then go in with the very tip of the eyeliner and just define along the outer edge. We're now going to move on to the bottom half of the eyes. I'm taking this Graphic Eyes Pencil by Zoeva in the shade Myth. This is a metallic pearly beige colour. I'm going to put some of this just outside the tear duct area and fade that up onto the mobile lid as well as placing some of that along the waterline covering the tear duct. We're going to be creating a nice feline point using liquid liner on the inner corner of this eye so you want to make sure you take that colour on the outside of that inner corner so it will sit on the inside of that black liner. Taking another graphic eyes pencil this time from the black box collection by Zoeva and I'm going to run that along the waterline two thirds of the way across to meet Myth. I'm dipping a tiny paintbrush into some of the Zoeva Calligraphic Liquid Liner and I'm creating a nice feline point on the inner corner of the eye. On the lower lid we're putting that eyeliner back to meet the eyeliner that we've got on the waterline and the top line on the inner corner is going to meet the top lash line. Going into my matte black eyeshadow by Natasha Denona, I'm going to smoke out that bottom line using my flat liner brush from my Iconic London Ultimate Brush Set. I'm wiggling my brush backwards and forwards with the eyeshadow, smoking it out. Remember that cat eyes are slightly tilted, that's why we pull the liner down at the inner corner and up at the outer edge. Bear this in mind when you're smoking it out. Try not to make the middle too thick, otherwise we're going to start losing that shape that we're trying to create. I'm going to use a tiny bit of that black to define the outer V shape of our socket. When you dip your brush into the black, work the majority of that colour off onto the back of your hand first before you apply it and then use what's left on the bristles to pull that colour up and just smoke it slightly. This is obviously an optional step but I really think it makes the world a difference. Going back to the face and a fluffy blending brush, I'm taking a small amount of the brown eyeshadow from the Charlotte Tilbury palette from the Date Eyes section and I'm buffing that onto either side of the nose up into the front of the eyebrows. And using what's left on the bristles I'm running that down either side of the nose. Going back to my pointed liner brush and a small amount of black eyeshadow, I'm going to map out the shape of a cat nose. You want to create a nice dip at the very centre of your nose, then you want to softly arc that around towards your nostrils. Then I'm going to use my Zoeva Calligraphic Liner to fill that in. This is a super inky black liner and it's completely matte. We're then going to draw a line directly from the nose down to the filtrum and fill that in. Then I'm going to slope a line from either side of the filtrum to line my top lip. Now I'm going for more of a cat like lip, you can however enhance your cupid's bow and give yourself proper looking lips, I wanted to keep it a bit more cat like so I'm disguising the cupid's bow. On the outer edges of my lips I'm flicking that upwards and then I'm feathering that liner towards the centre of my lip leaving the very centre slightly pink. So while the eyeliner is still wet I'm then using a brush to blend that out, so it's a very very subtle gradient. Going back to my small paintbrush, I'm dipping that into the eyeliner and creating little dots to mimic where the whiskers would be. Again, I'm drawing these up at an angle similar to the eyes to give it that kind of lifted appearance. At this stage I decided I wanted to extend the inner corners of the eyes, so using my flat angled liner brush and a small amount of black eyeshadow, I'm just extending the smoke. And then I'm using a fluffy brush to blend it. Again this is optional but I think it really does make it look more feline. Next I'm taking Hula by Benefit and I'm going to use this to redefine my cheekbones. Although we've already got a lot of contour going on, this is going to help really lift the face. I'm also going to take that on a small blending brush, creating a bit of a C shape around either side of the mouth, just to subtly make this area look a bit more prominent and also underneath my bottom lip. I'm going to take Sweet as Cocoa Blush by MAC. I'm going to tap that on to where the apple of the cheek is but then blend it away so that the centre of the face is still light and the colour is a bit more subtle. To take this from Cat to Glamour Puss we're going to use some Cover FX Enhancer Drops in Rose Gold and using my Beauty Blender I'm going to bounce that on top of the cheekbones. I'm also going to swipe a very small amount on my bottom lip and a very light amount on the very tip of the nose just above the black. To complete my Glamour Puss look I'm going to put on this Rock and Rose Virginia Wild Floral Choker 
and the most amazing Rock and Rose Selena Feather Black Cat Ears. These are the most amazing accessory. I absolutely love them. I know they're oversized, but that's what makes them so amazing. A real statement accessory. I will link and list both the choker and the feather ears in the description below, as well as the iconic brushes and all the other products that I've used in the tutorial. Happy Halloween, guys. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below. If you've got any questions, I will do my best to answer them. If you've missed any of my previous Halloween tutorials, the playlist is on screen for you now, as is the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. If you'd like to follow me outside of YouTube, my social handles are on screen. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye!